Yeah, what, what I'm going to talk about here is a fairly simple mathematical investigation that I'd, I'd been thinking about for quite some time and kind of doing back of the envelope proofs for. And then the, the announcement of this workshop caused me to write up a, a, ver, a very simple version of it. And I'll talk a bit about that and then about the, the more complex versions that, that I would like to do. So the, the basic question here was, you know, we know from a long time ago, from the work of, of Cox in the 40s or 50s, or, or whenever that was, and, and similar work of De Finetti before that, that if you assume some basic axioms about consistency, coherence of reasoning, then you can get probability theory to fall out of those axioms. And then one of the arguments people have against the cognitive relevance of this is, well, okay, but no real mind can ever be fully consistent and coherent in the real world, and therefore that argument in favor of probability theory is irrelevant. And the counter-argument to that that you'd like to make is, okay, but even if you want to be just approximately coherent and consistent, then that should mean you have to approximately follow probability theory. And that, that's almost obvious, but not, not quite obvious enough for the skeptics. So you want to go through and, and do calculations in, in, in that regard. And here I, I did some simple calculations for one of the axiomatic formulations of coherence and, and consistency. And got part way through doing it for, for some of the others, but didn't, didn't put, it, put it in this paper. So the basic answer is, is yeah, I mean, if, if you're approximately consistent and coherent, that means you're approximately following the rules of, of probability in, in, in your inferences. So I'll, I'll explain a bit of that, of that story here. So the basic idea underlying Cox's axiomatic foundation for probability theory was if you assume probabilities are real numbers, and you assume probability, if, sorry, let me start over. If you assume plausibilities as your generic measurement of uncertainty are real numbers, and if you assume that plausibilities obey a few basic commonsensical rules, like defaulting to Boolean logic in the case of absolute truth or falsity, and if you assume that plausibilities must be consistent in a certain sense, you can derive from that that plausibilities are some monotonically scaled version of, of probability. And the, the specific specifics of that were a bit more detailed, and unfortunately those of you in the back of the room can't, can't read that, but I made, I made most of these slides before I knew the, the human factors of the, of the room. But the, basic, the basics are, Cox assumed a simple, simple axiom about ne negation, so the, the function mapping the plausibility into the plausibility of, of its negation, if you compose it, you get, you get the identity, and the, the plausibility of a conjunction <laughs> depends only on the plausibility of the, of the conjuncts. And if you have two different ways to get to the same conclusion, the plausibility should come out the same, whether which, which way you follow. So if, if A and B is equivalent to C and D, if you get the plausibility of A, get, and get some more evidence, get the plausibility of B and put them together, it should give the same as if you do it for C and D. And this is the axiom that has seemed counterintuitive because, of course, in a real mind, that's not true. If there's two different routes to get to the same conclusion, we may not assign the same plausibilities to both of those conclusions as, as, as human beings because we don't have infinitely powerful minds and we get confused and, and, and do stupid things. So these, these axioms are too strong to apply with full accuracy to a real system like the human mind or even to a, a Bayes net or something that makes certain approximation assumptions. What Cox showed is that they lead to the conclusion that the plausibility is some monotonically scaled version of, of the probability, which was a very nice conclusion. I mean, when late, it was a bit naive in the way the proof was done. So Cox's proof actually assumed more. It assumed differentiability of, of the plausibility. And later people went through a lot of work to get rid of that assumption and replace it with more complicated things. And, and some more elegant things quite, quite recently. Now, there's a recent paper by Dupre and, and Tipler, which is the, 
The, sa the same Tipler, incidentally, who has posited the omega point at the end of the universe, when the universe will achieve infinite algorithmic information and, and all possible realities will happen. But th this is a more rigorous piece of, of mathematical work on, the, on his part. <laughs> and given that this is a short talk, I don't think there's not even time to read all the detailed a a axioms of this approach, but they are in the, in the paper and the proceedings. But in, in essence, I felt that you should be able to take any of the multiple axiomatic derivations of probability theory and make the axioms, rather than precise, make them probably approximately correct. Like the probability is greater than so and such that these axioms hold within error epsilon. And then you should be able to conclude that reasoning follows the probabilistic axioms in a probabilistic, probably approximately correct sense. And since, since I, I'm very busy with other things, I carried out that calculation for the simplest axiomatization of probability theory that I could find, which was Dupre and, and Tipler's, which is sort of, sort of order theoretic. It's, it's not actually my, my favorite derivation, but it's sim simple to go through the calculation. It, it's sort of a prototype for, for other, other results along the same line. So they, they, they make assumptions that you can kind of take a plausi plausibility value and do a kind of scalar rescaling of it, similar to a temperature value or anything else you're, you're, you're measuring. They assume that, that order is, is consistent. And... Their axiom four is the analog of Cox's main axiom, the one which was third on my list. So the, the kind of cognitively non-trivial axiom here is that getting to the same conclusion by multiple routes is, is going to give you this, the same answer. And Dupre and Tipler's ax, axiom four is, 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 is basically like that. So they, they assume as, as, as a function of x, this plausible value of x and e given c depends only on the plausible value of x given e and c. So that's, that's ba basically assuming that what order you consider the evidence in doesn't, doesn't influence the, the answer you get, which is cognitively dodgy because for humans, or for open cog for that matter, what order it gets the evidence in definitely can influence the, the conclusion it gets. So it's, it's not absolutely right for any, for any real mind. But from, from these axioms, that they basically, they derive rules of, of, of probability. I mean, the, the hard part is deri deriving the, the, this, this rule, which is, which is shown there, which is a kind of m multiplication rule for conditional plausibilities and showing it's a probability. And what's, what's done in the, in the paper, basically I, I replace their axiom four with a hacked axiom that has probabilities all over the place. So instead of saying these two different ways of getting to the same answer are equal, you say the two different ways of getting to the same answer are equal within epsilon with a probability greater than one minus delta. So it's, you're probably approximately sure to get to the same answer if you approach, approach it by considering evidence in, in, in two different orders, which, and if you assume that, what you arrive at, not very surprisingly, is that this, this product rule for conditional probabilities is probably approximately right for you. And you can, you can get the same thing with the, uh, the approximate additivity of plausible value. You, you can get it so that it, it approximately works. And if you're curious about these calculations, that they're, they're in, in the paper, which is an easier way to to digest it than look, looking at it on, on, on the screen. So the message from those calculations is, according to the Dupre and Tipler axioms, if the consistency holds approximately, then the plausibilities behave approximately like probabilities. Or as I, I almost gave this paper, the, the paper of this title, but decided not to, but probably approximately consistent plausibilities are probably approximately <laughs> probabilities, right? So that, that kind of, you can put that on your t-shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs>
which again is how you would think how it's how you would think that it works and and it does work it does actually work that way you know what I would like to do next in the spare time that I find for these things or would be happy for someone else to do you could do a similar calculation for other axiomatic derivations of, of probability theory so I I'm particularly I mean Cox's original axioms are are kind of screwed because they make I mean, they're right, but they make implicit differentiability assumptions. And people have tried to work around those in very complicated and annoying ways. But Newton Skilling had a recent paper called Foundations of Inference that does what I would consider the most elegant axiomatic derivation of, of probability theory. And I'm, I'm not going to go over that in, in detail now, but their they're basic axioms are, are just some extremely simple algebraic axioms on basically the union, which is their plus, the direct product, which is their times, and the, the, the composition, which is their circle with a dot in the middle, like, like chaining, of, <coughs> chaining of probabilities. So by assuming some extremely simple order theoretic axioms with these operations, they, they, they get that any way of assessing plausibility that obeys these basic symmetries must be probability. And I think that's very nice, and I think that you could do a proof on their axioms the same way I did for Dupre and Tipler's. It's just that the proof that probability follows from their axioms involves these fi fixed point theorems and these functional equations, which are a little messier than Dupre and Tipler's proof, and propagating the probabilities through the Fixed point theory is, is more annoying, so I, so I got lazy and, and didn't do it. But it, I'm 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 pretty sure that, that it's it's possible, and you you would derive the same conclusion here. One another thing that's interesting, with is a bit of, of an aside, is if if you don't assume plausibilities are real numbers, the whole thing still works. You just get complex number or quaternionic or oct or octonionic plausibilities, which is kind of interesting from the generalized uh, Frobenius theorem that says those are the only division algebras. And if you take the complex number plausibility of being all these symmetries, then you can derive quantum mechanics from that, as Saul Yusef showed, and Newton Skilling have discussed in some follow-up papers. So actually, this all relates to the foundations of quantum mechanics in, in a sort of interesting way. So like qu quantum logic takes real number probabilities on a non-distributed, non-Boolean lattice. The other way is to keep the same lattice and use complex number plausibilities or complex number probabilities. And you, you can do all, all this stuff there too, which is, is somewhat interesting. And there may be relations between the foundations of inference and the foundations of quantum theory. But that, that is a digression for this talk. Now, another kind of theorem that would be interesting to prove, which I have no idea how to prove, but someone else with more time for proving theorems may do in the future. <laughs> you would like to show that... If you have an intelligent system with a certain amount of resources and it wants to achieve some goal in an environment, that that system should be trying to keep itself reasonably consistent and coherent, basically. And I think that, like, o o o OpenCog has to do that. I mean, it, you can never completely accurately obey these consistency axioms of, like, always getting the same conclusion if you approach the same problem in two different ways. But you will achieve your goals better if you can approximately be coherent and consistent in, in that way. And I mean, that, that takes work. As a human being, it takes work not to become completely ir ir irrational. And as an open cog system, it does as well. There's cleanup operations it has to do. And I, I think that is a property of, of finite, finite resources systems, that they're smarter if they devote attention to maintaining coherence and, and consistency. And that, that is because probably approximately being consistent lets you probably approximately obey probability theory, which will let you achieve your goals better in, in, in the real world. So th this is, is my way of answering the question, probability theory or not. I mean, I, I, I think the answer is yes. I mean, other, other tools will certainly be useful. And we use fuzzy set theory inside OpenCog for, for, for various things as well. But Ultimately, I do think probability theory is the right way to think about achieving goals in, in environments for AGI systems. And 
a bunch of this axiomatic theory, most of which was developed decades ago, but keeps getting refined by other people. I mean, I think this helps explain why. And that's all. <laughs>